So for the past two to three years, I've gone entirely social media free. Now, to be honest, I'm not really sure what caused me to make that decision in the first place, or even why it's stuck with me all this time. But as I look back over those few years, I'm starting to realize that it's almost unintentionally become one of the best decisions I've ever made. I'll show you what I mean. The average American spends roughly two and a half hours per day on apps like Instagram, Twitter, and Snapchat. That's almost 17 hours per week, 880 hours per year, and adds up to a staggering six and a half years of your life. The reason for such astonishing numbers? Addiction. Specifically designed to mimic the addictive effects of gambling or drugs, social media platforms provide a constant feeling of what could be. And likes, comments, and views make sure we always come back for another hit of repetitive and addictive pleasure. My question comes down to this. What makes it worth that much of our time? And if it isn't, what could we ever hope to do about it? This was a question I'd never even thought about before taking my first 30-day detox from social media. To me, it didn't really seem like I was addicted at all. I would check a couple times each day, post a picture here and there, and that was that. But as I started to spend more time away from my social media accounts, I started to realize just how useless my time on there had been. The first 30-day detox led to a second, and then to a third. And it got me thinking that not only was social media largely pointless, but there are actually certain things that could be harmful to living a spiritual life. And though social media affects different people in different ways, I was able to narrow it down to three points which I think have affected all of us in some way or another. I think most of us will have found that using apps like Instagram put us into a form of comparison mode. The beautifully curated stream of what other people have and are can leave us feeling down about ourselves and the things that we own, fostering ungodly feelings like jealousy or pessimism. On the other end of the social comparison spectrum, social media can be a catalyst for pride, the very opposite of the spirit of Christ who never wanted others to spread his greatness around. Then there's the inevitable problem of overstimulation. Social media provides a constant string of posts, likes, DMs, and more, leading us feeling the need to constantly check back to make sure we haven't missed a thing. In fact, one study found that the average computer user switches from one task to another every 40 seconds, and that it takes an average of 25 minutes to get back into the flow of our work after being interrupted. The result is an inability to focus on anything important or difficult like Bible study or reading. Finally, social media is a massive time killer that sucks away too much of our time from performing our service in the truth to the best of our ability. I'm sure many of us have made the classic excuse of, oh, I just don't have enough time, to get away from doing things we know we should do, like Bible study or service to others. The real problem isn't that we don't have enough time, it's simply that our priorities aren't in check, and we're not using the time that we do have in a meaningful way. I think I knew that most of these things were a problem while I was using these apps, but the true weight of it didn't really strike home until I had actually stopped using them. And when I came back after that first month of being away, I realized that many of the things I thought I had cared about so much really didn't matter as much as I had initially imagined. But it wasn't just the negative aspects of social media that I'd noticed. I had also started to notice more positive things from being away from them. Since quitting social media for good, the screen time on my phone has dropped from more than three hours a day to just barely an hour. And that extra time has made room for new habits like daily Bible study or reading Christadelphian books. Instead of losing sleep by scrolling through my phone until one or two in the morning, I fall asleep much earlier, meaning I can wake up at a far more reasonable time and be far more healthy and productive throughout the day. Notably, I've found that much less of my time is spent thinking about what I should post next in order to boost my social image, and it's made me question other similar activities like video games and sports, forcing me to ask whether or not these things are really bringing lasting value into my life. 
It's a question we all need to ask ourselves with anything we feel could be harmful to our life in Christ. And sometimes all it takes is some time without that thing in our life to give us a realistic answer. The benefits of reduced social media use are clear and for the most part fairly obvious. But I think the hardest obstacle to overcome isn't knowing the effects that it can have on us, but actually doing something about it. And so the goal of this video is to share some of the things that I found helpful on my own journey so that maybe you'll be able to benefit from them as well. The first and most important step is to decide that you want to make a change. Ask yourself whether or not social media is helping you on your walk towards the kingdom. Like anything else in life, if the answer is no, then it's probably a good sign that it needs to go. Then once you've committed to a change, decide how long you want to quit. Whether it's a week, a month, or a year, it's good to have an end goal in mind. Setting a goal even as simple as this is scientifically proven to increase your chances of success. The next step is easy in principle, but hard in practice, and that's actually achieving the goal. Rather than simply relying on sheer willpower to avoid these apps altogether, I recommend that you delete them entirely from your phone. For the first few days, you'll find that you instinctively pick up your phone and tap where the app used to be, but soon enough that reflexive feeling will be gone, and you'll feel a sense of freedom unlike anything you've felt before. Oh, and while you're at it, delete any other apps that you may start to gravitate towards instead. And that leads to another point, which is making use of your extra time. Because removing the time-wasting influence of social media is one thing, but actually knowing what to do with that extra time is another. For myself, I noticed I would quickly find other useless things to occupy my time, things like repeatedly checking email or text, or even binge watching YouTube. So as much as this is a challenge for you, it's also a challenge for myself to make use of that time in a more meaningful way. So whether that's picking up a Christadelphian book when you have a 15 minute window, making a more conscious effort to pray without ceasing, or even just working on more relevant projects, all of those things are way better than spending our time on nothing. So whether it's for the next couple of months, 30 days, or even just a week, I challenge you to pull out your phone, delete those distracting apps, and use your time in a way that's more pleasing to God. And I can promise you, you'll like it.